Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome to, the to the Book, Book Doctor's, Doctor's YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. We have an honored guest here today. We do. Cheryl Willis Hudson Hi. is uh, our guest, our YouTube guest, and our Pitchapalooza yes. guest today. And Cheryl, can you tell us a little bit about your publishing history? Well, I've been in publishing for about 40 odd, odd years, and started <laughs> in educational publishing, but transitioned into children's book publishing. So my husband and I own and operate a company called Just Us Books, and we specialize in African American interest books for all children. Nice. Now, so when, when I tell people that I work with my wife, about 80% of them go, are you kidding? I couldn't stand working with my mom, you whitey nuts. And yet, we've had a fantastic we have. <laughs> a time running our business. I'm yeah. curious what it's like. Well, you know, uh, we've been in business, actually this year we celebrate uh, our 30th year wow. in the business. So we have been married for 47 years. Damn! I know, I know. <laughs> well, I got well, you know, to get a round kind of applause for that. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. But the, the main thing is, you know, you, we kind of respect each other's uh, gifts and sensibilities. Right. Yeah. And I try to remember to stay in my lane. Yeah. <laughs> my husband, it's not easy, is it? Sometimes it's no, a little bit difficult. Easy. But uh, actually, my husband is a writer. Um, my background is in art and art direction. Uh -huh. So I'm the, officially the editorial director. My husband is the president and CEO and handles things like rights and permissions uh -huh. and um, just the general operation of the company. And my role is to interact with both the authors and the illustrators and production people. So you really have complementary skills, we which do. is what we do too. We do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how have you seen the industry change in terms of being an independent publisher over the years, the 30 years that you guys have been in business? Uh, the industry has changed uh, a lot. We have exhibited at Book Expo and participated uh -huh. in, in BookCon, but we see a lot more uh, in terms of uh, diversity of the authors. Yeah. Very few uh, people of color were presenting and or exhibiting 30 years ago. Yeah. Now there are more, but there are actually more individuals who have publishing companies and concerns. And that's I think that's opened up the industry a lot in terms of creativity and the kinds of stories that can be shared. Yeah. I'm wondering for young people who want to get into publishing, who you know don't necessarily have years of experience, um, who are people of color, what is your recommendation of how to enter this business? Well, I mean, you enter it almost in the same way that everybody else does. When I started publishing, I yeah. worked at a company in Boston, which will remain nameless now, but I was one of the <laughs> only black people there on yeah. staff. I think there was one editor and one other person in production. And um, the, the, the question is not how people of color can become qualified. Yeah. It's the people who are gatekeepers yes. and exactly. are not necessarily that's open right. Right. to that. And sometimes people who have these gatekeeping positions are, are, are work in a world of privilege, which is not recognized as such so yeah. they sometimes don't even know that they are being discriminatory or are not uh, opening the doors for people who have talent but of course the problem is economics as well because publishing is traditionally not paid very well yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's a hindrance in terms of uh, qualified people right qualified people may be looking elsewhere they may be looking at tech jobs they may yeah. be right. looking to go sure. to law school well and also <laughs> often you have to do a free internship in publishing to get experience Experience. Yeah. Now, I don't recommend that at all. Okay. And as an independent publisher, I recommend internships. When we started out 30 years ago, we had interns, and yep. we were not paying ourselves, but we paid our interns. <laughs> wow. Uh, because wow. there's a value in work. And there is. It's on the job training, but there's value in work. So I recommend that all of those internships be paid interns. Yep. Uh, you have to have that. Um, you have to go to conferences and go to places where you can hone your craft, yeah. but a lot of publishing, especially editorial publishing, is on the job training. So if you don't have it, you can't get it unless you're hired to do it. Right. Yep. And so. what, um, when, when, when writers approach you about being published, 
What are some of the things you see that uh, that work that you go, oh, that's somebody I want to work with? And what are some of the red flags for you? Well, one of the, I'll, I'll talk about the red flag first. It's grandmothers yeah. who read to their children. No, yes. we hear that all the time. We hear that every day. <laughs> and think that they have the perfect yes. book for and everybody. we hear that every yeah. day. Uh, but, I mean, that's a good sign, too, because you do have to read to children, and children do have to respond to right. what the story is. But that's a kind of a red flag. You, your uh, submission letter uh, says, I'm a grandmother and my child yeah. loves my book. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not reading too much farther. But no. I think a good, strong pitch letter is important. And you can tell uh, within a paragraph or two, and usually within the first page, for a children's book, which is only 32 pages anyway, if it's a picture book, if there's a seed of an idea or, or something that can, can make a successful story. And are there are there certain backgrounds that you really look to? For example, if someone's an elementary school teacher. Is that meaningful to you for a children's book? Not necessarily. Uh -huh. um, we really don't look at the, the background at all. It's okay. more really? just oh. the, the pitch. This is the story. Uh, it's an authentic story. If it has some research, if it does have in this era, uh, social media uh, following, this is what I've done, this is how I interact with children. Yeah. Because you don't want someone writing a story that doesn't have any interaction with children. But I mean, it, it's helpful if you have a teaching background. Um, it's and, helpful, but we don't necessarily look for that. And how do you feel about books that are didactic? Um, that's a, a, a word that's kind of a trigger yes. because for so many years people looked at books by uh, or about African American history or stories as didactic. So I'm, I'm, I think didactic is not the word. Stories teach lessons. Um, their moral tales, Aesop's fables, are sure. didactic. They may be about animals, but they have lessons that children can relate to. So um, I don't like the word didactic, um, but a story has got to have some flair. It's got to have a, a, a joy in the language. It's got to really relate in terms of the pictures and the words. So. Um, it's got to really sing, it's got to have rhythm, so right. it can't didactic, just teach. It can't yeah, just we get teach so many lesson. people who, who are coming to us to do mm -hmm. kids books, and the first thing you see in their pitch is, you're going to learn a lot from this, and, and you know, th th that yeah. should be at the end, I feel or like. It's a story, it's a character. Is, this is an anti-bullying right. book, or yeah. what have well, you. Well, I think that you can frame uh, the, the context of the story if it's about bullying, yeah. you can say this book is about bullying, but yeah. You can't tell the story by saying this is a book about bullying, no, no, right? No, and this no, is no, how no, you no. are a bully. That, Still have to have characters and story. Yeah. And, yes. And there's got to be a story. There's got to be an authentic voice, and there's got to be a relatable voice so that a child can see himself in the story. Okay. And what advice do you have uh, for writers? Um, study hard. Read a lot. Read a lot. Read widely. Read uh, books and do your research. Yeah. That's, that's, that's exactly, exactly what we what tell we everybody. All right. And thank Thanks you for this everybody. lovely soft jazz that's going on in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye. See you at the bookstore. See you at the bookstore.